Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Mirbat Abul Maati, Professor of Cardiology, Consultant in Physiology at Ain Shams University, and the President of the Egyptian Cardiac Rhythm Association, which is a branch of the Egyptian Society of Cardiology. This is the second session, and I'm going to present a case of cryo balloon AF ablation live in a box. Here is a male patient, 35 years old, not diabetic or hypertensive. He complained of recurrent attacks of irregular palpitation, which was proved to be atrial fibrillation of seven years duration. They were of sudden onset, sudden offset, lasting four hours, reaching 12 hours, frequency twice per week. He received one disc shock three years ago, and these attacks were exacerbated by stress and drinking coffee. He was air class two uh, regarding symptoms, and he was not tolerating his medication. So he decided to come for cryo balloon ablation. His blood pressure was normal, heart rate sinus 60, normal ECG and normal cardiac examination. This is his ECG with atrial fibrillation with a full list of medication to control it and to revert him to sinus rhythm. And this is his 12 lead ECG of sinus rhythm, normal ECG. His echocardiography is normal, ejection fraction 66%, normal left atrial dimension, 37 millimeter, no valvular abnormalities and normal left ventricular functions. We gave him halter for 24 hour, which showed paroxysm of AF uh, during daytime. His laboratory investigation were normal and we checked his thyroid profile and was completely normal. So we planned for cryo balloon AF ablation. Before ablation, we do TE in order to check for left atrial appendage uh, free and uh, we, by sometimes, we measure the interatrial septum. CT pulmonary venography is important in, uh, in cryo balloon in order to check for the anatomy of the veins and the presence of common vein and the different ostia and the size of the appendage. This is CT image of this patient showing he has common left side pulmonary vein and two right side veins. The procedure is done under general anesthesia without muscle relaxant or under conscious sedation because it is painful. We have to have to get ready with the ACT machine in order to check the ACT uh, every 30 minutes and we give 10,000 heparin in the beginning and we check it every uh, 20 minutes. Uh, we start by right femoral vein puncture in order to insert the transeptal sheath, uh, which is first the uh, regular transeptal sheath, the sand jute sheath, and then we, we exchange it for the flex sheath, which is particular for the cryo balloon. We use the left femoral vein for a decapolar deflectable catheter in order to be placed into CS and another puncture for the quadripolar catheter inserted into the his bundle position. The left femoral artery sometimes is used for invasive arterial blood pressure monitoring or the radial artery with the uh, anesthesia team. Here we started and immediately after the patient went into the lab, and placing the CS caster and the his caster, he went into AF, as you can see on the monitor screen, atrial fibrillation running, and here on the other screen, the fluoro screen, we can see the CS caster into the left atrium and the upper caster into the, uh, into the his bundle position. I will show you, this is the transeptal needle inserted into the long cheese, uh, particular for this uh, puncture, and placed here the needle place into the uh, in, uh, fossa ovaris or, or near, yes, in the interatrial septum, and we pass into the left side. We check by fluoroscopy by in the RU view and in the LA view in order to make sure that we are there. And sometimes we use contrast in order to make sure that we are inside the left atrium, as you can see here after removal of the needle. Uh, we can inject, uh, uh, even when the needle is there, we can inject through the needle or through the dilator. The needle here is removed, and the sheath and the dilator are in the left atrium. We inject in order to make sure of our anatomy. You can see the CS is in place, the copular caster and the his caster in the his position. Now we place the, this is, we still have the regular sheath. We wanted to make sure of the anatomy of the veins, so we injected as we see by, with a multiple purpose caster, the left superior pulmonary vein. Here is the ECG. Now he, is in, he, he went into AF with the caster manipulation, and this is common happens. Then we decided to coadjuvert him, but after this step. 
Here is the atrial fibrillation. We, we said, okay, we will place the flex sheath uh, by exchanging on a guide wire. And we can see here is the uh, blood pressure monitoring, uh, the red line, and the AF running with the ECG above. Okay. We decided to cardiovert him. Of course, he's under genesis, so it was easy with the anesthesia team. And he was back to sinus rhythm. We, we started to prepare the machine and the equipment for the uh, cryo balloon ablation. As you can see, this is the uh, cryo catheter, and there is a side way to inject uh, saline and the contrast. And here is the achieve catheter, which records the pulmonary vein potential. The gas cable is connected to the machine, which uh, delivers the gas, which makes the cooling. And this electrical cable uh, for uh, the machine NAFSA. Now, uh, everything should be flushed with heparin. Everything should be checked. And here is our team, uh, Omar Hatim, Dr. Musa, and Dr. Mazen. Uh, and you can see here is placing the um, achieve catheter inside the uh, balloon in order to pass through it into the vein. OK? Everything should be uh, no air and should be flushed. And here is the balloon should be prepared in saline in special way. And also a uh, flushing, uh, preparing the contrast, which will be connected to the sideway of the balloon in order to inject after inserting it. Inject, inject, injection, we'll see what this injection is important for. Everything should be checked. Everything should be step by step. And training should be uh, given to everybody who wants to go into cryo balloon ablation. Now you can see that the, the CS caster is dislodged, but we don't care now. Now the, the, the delivery system, the flex sheath is inside uh, the left atrium. The balloon is inflated. The, decap the achieve caster is recording and we are injecting contrast in order to, to see good sealing of the balloon to the vein. Here, cooling will start, and there is continuous temperature monitoring uh, by uh, through the catheter, the electrical cable I showed you, to the uh, console of the cryo. The temperature is going down, minus 10, minus 11, we go to minus 40, and we stay there for about two minutes. Yes? And here is the, the timer, and everything is monitored on this screen. The temperature is going down. Yes. Good contact, good temperature control, and drop. This means good cooling and, and good ablation. We look at the potentials, and we look that the potentials are gone from the left side vein. Not, we, don't, we do, again, exit block, which is pacing from different pools of the multipolar caster, the achieve caster, to see if there is any connection, there is exit block, no connection, pacing the white big spikes, and no, no conduction to the atrium. We go to the second vein, we place the catheter uh, inside it, we move with the, uh, with the achieve uh, catheter, and there is the balloon, we inject the balloon, we'll, we'll inject the dye, as you see here, we confirm good sealing of the orifice, and then we'll go cooling. Then we go to the right-sided vein here. We wanted to inject uh, the vein to do venogram again to the right superior pulmonary vein and to place the flex sheath inside this vein. Now we have to move the decapolar caster to the uh, uh, right or left subclavian in order to place the phrenic nerve to stimulate it. As you see, the, the decapolar caster is moved up and here we uh, inflate the balloon before we cool, we inject a dye into the vein, good sealing to the right superior pulmonary vein. And meanwhile, we are stimulating the phrenic nerve to make sure that it is contracting. Muscle relaxant hinders this motion, so we ask the anesthesiologist not to give too muscle relaxant during this part because we want to see the phrenic stimulation and the phragmatic contraction. You can see here on the, on the review screen, these white uh, spikes are pacing in the phrenic nerve uh, stimulation during uh, right side uh, ablation. Here, the potentials recorded from the achieve catheter, the white spike 
These are the PVPs from the right side. And then we pace phrenic nerve stimulation in order to make sure that we are not injuring the phrenic nerve. Now we close, we uh, inflate the balloon while pacing for the phrenic nerve. We can see we are injecting a contrast. The achieve is way down into the pulmonary veins. When we make sure that this is okay, we go by cooling through the console, of course, like what you saw, and we check for potentials. After that, we pace from the achieve different poles in order to make sure there is no conduction, no potential, and exit block. Follow-up of the patient after the procedure. He is kept on novel NUAC or heparin for three, AI or Marivan for three months. The continuation of the antiarrhythmic medication for three months, and we do home halter monitor after six months and follow-up reassurance. The success rate of cryo balloon is as equal to the um, uh, RF ablation uh, 3D mapping ranging between 70 to 80 percent. In some centers, they start by it in the paroxysmal AF patients. Other centers don't. Everyone has to choose uh, the technique. If it is available, it is good for those uh, nice cases, paroxysmal AF patients. It is not suitable for persistent AF cases who have scars uh, in the atrium. Thank you very much.